So whenever you open Blender, you're probably used to seeing what I have here. This is the default layout. And whether you're new to Blender or you're a professional, you've been doing it for years, there's um, always stuff that you want to change when you load it in. Like for one, delete the default cube because nobody likes the default cube. So I'm going to go through a few settings that I always have set as default and then show you how to make it so when you open Blender, it's set up and ready to go. So I'm going to start off with the easiest thing, which is the scene and of course, the default cube. So let's just select it all, delete it. See you later, because uh, I like to start with a nice clean scene. And I might even also delete this default collections. That's it for the scene really. I'm gonna go onto the side now and default render is Eevee. I never use that when I produce the stuff that I produce. I always do it in cycles because it looks better. So why wouldn't you want it <laughs> to look better? And also I'm gonna set it to GPU compute, uh, the default CPU, which is just generally slower. Um, so for most scenarios, you want to render it on GPU. So I'm going to set that there. First of all, in the render settings here, which is when you press render and it exports, it's got a denoiser on. I'm going to turn that off because that essentially just kills all my textures usually. And again, I like my stuff looking the best as possible. So I'm going to get rid of that. And importantly now in the advanced settings is this little guy here. Use animated seed. Now what happens usually when you render something the noise or the way that Blender throws light at your scene to calculate how it looks, it always throws it from the same point or the same seed. And this creates this really disgusting, horrible looking static noise. And it's not realistic. It's not what you'd have in when you're filming things. It looks very CGI, it looks horrible. So if you turn this on, it randomizes the light pattern each time and creates this nice sort of random noise, which is much, much less noticeable. So. I have no clue why Blender doesn't have that on as default, but there you go, definitely turn that on. I also like to have on Motion Blur, of course, everything looks better with Motion Blur. And um, yes, another one, Performance, Persistent Data. Essentially between your frames, if you're rendering out 10 frames, with this off, it's gonna load a frame, it's gonna render the frame, and then it's gonna clear everything from memory and then load the frame again. And this, if you're rendering out a long sequence of frames, this will, end up taking up a lot of time. Just checking that on keeps the scene in the memory and makes everything render out faster, which is nice. That's pretty much it for render settings. So it's just uh, turning off denoise, turning on this one is the main thing and uh, turning on motion blur. But those are super nice to have and now I don't have to do that every single time I open Blender because that sucks. Next thing I'm gonna do is change the frame rate to 25 frames a second. Uh, I live in the UK, which has the PAL standard. So basically everything's filmed in 25 frames a second, my camera, all the films <laughs> that I do and, and whatever. So to make sure when I press play in Blender and I'm watching an animation, say I put a cube in here and move it over there and I do that and I make it move over here and I do that and I press play. This is running at 24 frames a second, which is ever so slightly slower um, than it would be at 25 frames a second. So just changing that to 25 lets me see how my scene will actually be run. Um, and it's just nice to have everything set up correctly. I'm also gonna set while I'm here, do some output settings. I just want really small files when I'm doing play blasts and quick animations, uh, just to see how my things are looking. I don't want it taking up loads and loads of space. Um, so I usually set this JPEG and then that's just fine. Uh, usually when I export my films anyway, uh, I'm setting that to multi-layer EXR files, which is a whole different thing, which take up loads of space. But for the most part, when I start a new project, uh, I just set that to JPEG and to keep the file sizes nice and small. Um, and then that's pretty much it there. Unless you want to change your default resolution, I leave it at 1080p. Um, 4K is crazy. <laughs> for 3D, it'd take forever to render things out. I mean, you could set it to... 720p or whatever. And those are pretty much all the settings that I have to uh, have a nice clean version of Blender when I open it up. Now, the only thing to do now is to save that because uh, if I were to close this now and open Blender again, it would set it back to default. So what I want to do is go file and then go onto defaults and then save startup file. And what that is gonna do is that's gonna save a .blend file somewhere in your computer uh, with all these settings so that now if I close Blender, even if I don't save and I open Blender again and stick it over here so you can see it. It's going to have a lovely clean 
um, interface. And yeah, that's it for a simple sort of blender scene. Now, there are a few sort of extras which I like to do, which I'm going to do now. The stuff I usually make has sort of long cinematic camera moves, so there's um, a thing I usually set up for that. And then I usually like to set my scene up so there's like a camera, lighting, and objects sort of collection. So I'm just going to do that now so that I don't have to do it every single time I open Blender. And because I work full time in Blender, it's going to save me 10 minutes a day, five days a week for a whole year. So I'd say it's worth doing. So I usually set my scene up like this, uh, free collections, I call one and I'm just pressing C to make those and F2 to rename it. I'm going to call one scene and inside of scene, I'm going to have one called lighting. And I'm going to have one called camera. I'm going to have another collection as well called objects. And this is just me being nice and organized. I like having everything like this. So with my camera, I'm going to shift A, add a camera. And I know we deleted the default one, but no one, no one likes the defaults. I'm also going to add an empty, actually two empties. So I'm just going to shift D that. So there's now two empties. And I'm going to call one camera target and I'm going to call one camera focus and this is a super nice way to animate cameras so what I'll do is I'll take the camera and I'll pop into the constraints add an object constraint and track that to the camera target so now this camera is always going to be looking at this target null here. So if I move that as well, the camera's looking at that. And I find that's a super nice way to move a camera. So if you want to do something like just pan around something, all you have to do is move the camera on the Y axis or whatever axis, and you're going to have a nice sort of panning shot. So it's just a nice way to have a camera set up. It does take a few button presses. So again, having it as default is super awesome. Uh, and I can do the same thing with the focus. So I love having depth of field. To be honest, the more of my renders that are out of focus, the better, because you can't see any of the imperfections. So always have depth of field on. So I'm gonna attach that to the camera focus. So the camera's always gonna have that in focus. If I just quickly create a little scene with a cube in it and we jump into the camera view and we turn it to cycles. Of course, the default set to cycles now. I'm also gonna add a plane and I'm gonna add a light. Now, if I take the camera and I change the depth of field to something super tiny, I can now move this focus point null and use it to focus exactly where I want it to. So I can have it exactly on the corner and yeah, that'll have my focus exactly on the corner. So that's super nice thing to do. So I'm just gonna get rid of this junk, which I just made. So that's the camera, camera focus and camera target. I'm also gonna put the camera on a spline. And this is usually how I animate a camera. Is I find it's the easiest way and you can get really nice moves. I'm just gonna add a curve, a bezier curve. And I'm gonna click on that, press tab, select the end, press shift S and move cursor to selected. So that moves this uh, little cursor to there. And then I can press tab, click on the camera, shift S, and move that to the cursor. So now that's exactly on the end of the line. Now I can click on the camera, click on the spline, press control P to parent it, and click follow path. So now what that's gonna do is make this camera follow along this spline. And you can see here on path animation, if I change the evaluation time, it's going to move along that. So I'm going to right click and clear the keyframes on there, set that to zero. And then if I put this all the way back to frame zero using shift and left arrow, I can press I on there to make a keyframe. And if I press shift and right arrow to go to the last frame, I can type in 100 and press I there to make a keyframe. Now, if I press play, that's going to move along this spline. I just find this is a super easy way to move a camera in a nice way. So if I want to make an arc, I can just sort of move these bits around here. And basically just if I scale these up and scale these up and scale these up and do a thing, maybe I'll do that. You can create quite a nice smooth camera move. So I, since I always have this in my scene, that's why I'm adding it here. And yes, I can go into the camera. You can see there's a nice sort of panning move which is lovely. If I put a cube in there as well. So there you go. That's a cool camera move. Just to make things nice, I'm going to rename this camera track. I love naming things. Keep everything organized and you'll, you'll thank yourself for it in the future. And yeah, 
and that's it. So I've got my collections, I've got my camera collection with all my bits in it, I've got my lighting if I want to put lights down, which I definitely will, objects for anything else, super neat, and again, file, defaults, save startup file, save startup file. And now every time I open Blender, I'm ready to go, which is sweet. So yeah, that's it. Um, super easy, super nice to do, will save you loads of time definitely recommend doing it. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. Let me know also what you put in your startup file. Uh, maybe you don't delete the default cube, although you're kind of crazy if you don't do that. Maybe there's something super useful for other people to learn from as well. Um, but yeah, stick it down in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.